Hello everyone. I'm doing something that I've not done for quite some time, and that is make an actual video. But in this instance, it's even going to be an edited video. How high budget? I've had a desire as of late to get back into making videos, and obviously they're not going to be anything high production value, but I like showing things, and I think I can add value to the YouTube space and what I can show. And I say value, but I don't know. I think I have an interesting perspective on things. In this instance, not nearly as much, but I just want to show it because I like this thing. And that's really all I do care about is uh, showing things I'm enthusiastic about, which in more recent times has been more phones than computers, though I am still very much enthusiastic about computers. Well, vintage computers more or less, but I digress. Anyways, this is a Avocado Green Western Electric 500 hailing from October 1967. This is a photo found for a little while. Um, not as long as, say, my bedside phone. I'll grab it really quick. I've had this phone for years. And I have put some pretty significant use on it. And it, uh, it needs a new set cord. But we won't talk about that. But I've used this phone a lot. And I've had to do eh, a decent amount of maintenance to it. And this is, I should note, from 1978. What is it? Uh, mm, 35th week, 6th day in 1978. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not going to try to figure out when that was. I don't care. But this is from October 67. And this is the focus of the video anyways. So that's all that matters. So being from 67, this is not a modular telephone. You can see here. I took the line cord, which has its spade connectors, and wired it into this biscuit jack. Let me open it really quick. As you can see, it's just the four spade connectors. Nothing special. Well, actually, on this line cord, there's only three. I believe yellow is ground in this instance, but it's not being used, but I'm probably wrong. But you can see tip ring. I'm not going to touch it because this is live. Uh, but that's what I did, and I thought that was going to be the easiest solution, and it has been. Music gives me an RJ11 modular connection. But this is what the phone did come with. And this is one of the few reasons, well, one of many reasons, really, that I bought this telephone in the first place. Now, I have pre-opened this up. And I have opened this up because I had never seen what the inside of this looked like. I believe this is the 505A connector. Yes, it's, uh, it actually says it right in there. Western Electric 505A. And I believe the receptacle is the 505B. Probably wrong. But this is what the inside of this connector actually looks like. Is you take your spade connectors and they it come the well the line cord comes up and kind of wraps around and the spade connectors get pushed into here so you have your green your red your black and your yellow and this little plastic retainer piece holds the line cord into place and in typical bell system western electric fashion that is a captive screw one of the little nice touches that they had. Now this is pre-1969, of course all of this is, but you can see it has the pre-1969 Bell System badging, which I don't know, it's kind of neat. Now, the telephone itself, which is what we're here to see. We have a 9C dial and I made this dial card, I'll go over that in a minute, and our uh, translucent finger wheel. This is a G3 handset, and being this is pre, I believe 1968 is when they changed this. It says Western Electric made in USA. Now the newer ones say uh, Bell System property not for sale, Western Electric. I believe, oh well, no, I know. <laughs> of course we have our uh, permanently affixed set cord, which is color matched. Oh man, the camera is having a moment. And this is in pretty good condition. I still need to clean it. I haven't just haven't gotten around to it, but it's in pretty good condition. It's not really kinked 
graphics outside of this here, but even that's pretty minor. And on the back, we have our mouse, uh, our mouse hole and our line cord. Now I'm not, I believe this is the original line cord or what I believe may have happened is this telephone was installed and shortly thereafter, this was added. Now, I've never had a phone that had the 505A connector on it, so, or a phone this old, but internally this uses uh, cloth wires, but this has PVC, I believe, wrapped uh, cord. And also, this just looks a little dinky in the mouse hole, but this was kind of a transition period too, so that might be it. The really only condition found, oh, condition problem this telephone has is, well, outside of the uh, corrosion on the bottom, I'll get to that in a moment. But, eh, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a very slight deviation in color. Uh, this must have been in front of the sun a little bit because the color in the cradle and around the dial, these don't yellow for some reason. But this color and this color are not quite the same. I'm not sure if that will come across the video. Maybe you can see, I don't know. It's also a pretty warm light over here, so that's probably not helping. So, I had expected when I purchased this telephone that I was gonna have to do, uh, I'm gonna say significant maintenance, excuse me, but some maintenance and I didn't have to do anything. Now, that might just be because this phone really hasn't been used much compared to my bedside phone, but this 78, 2500, I've had to do some work on the dial, mainly um, cleaning the contacts because I was having intermittent problems with it. But outside of that, and oh, another thing, that's right, I had to do with this is I had to replace the original modular line connection. And the RJ11 on the back. This phone's really not in the best condition, but it does work fine. But this I had to replace the original because the original uh, RJ11 modular connector uh, shattered. I moved the phone around a lot back when I was using it as my main telephone. And now res resides in my bedside, so it doesn't get moved around nearly as much, but constantly plugging it and unplugging it into different jacks, uh, well, move, just moving it around and stuff, it broke. So, um, Memory Lane Telephones, I believe, is the eBay store. I bought a set, a new RJ9 and a new RJ11 connector, uh, modular connectors for it, and they're great. I don't know if they're new old stock or what, but, or just modern production. Don't know, don't care, they work fine. And of course, this being pre-modular, don't have to worry about that problem. And this thing is surprisingly sturdy. Although I guess for 60s Western Electric, I really shouldn't be surprised. Now, I do want to talk about the dial card, or the number card rather. So you can see, I made it myself. I used my Power Macintosh G3 with Apple Works and my Image Writer 2 to print it. I think it looks pretty good. I'd like to make another one that's a little bit better looking because the text isn't perfect, but it works fine for now. So you can see D dial nine for outside line and please wait for dial tone. And it says this number is Cumberland 2 1796. Now that is its number. I have on my Nortel BCM seven digit numbers. So this is 2821796. And the way I have it set up on the B, on the BCM is that I have seven digit numbers, of course, but each line type has a three digit prefix and then four digits for the number. So not to deviate too much, but 282CU21796. This phone over here, this is 233-9462. And this phone, which is not set up, I don't remember, but its number starts with 247, which is for IP phones, and 233 for digital phones, and one more example, these jacks over here, 
This is wired directly into the BCM, so it's using its internal ATAs. And you can see 2263685. So that's just some explanation on how that's set up. But again, it's in very good condition. There's some oddity to the texture on top of the handset. And I don't know if it's been painted or if it's just kind of, I don't know, weird, but I should have mentioned that earlier. It just popped into my head now. But back on the maintenance thing, this thing worked perfectly fine out of the box and the dial sounds fantastic. I know people like the sound of the older dials better and I like them, but I still have an, a soft spot for the 9C dial. So I guess before I open this up, uh, I guess I can call, let me think here. That is the telephone or the Nortel phone on my network shelf. Or I can dial O and it will make this phone ring as I have direct dial set up. And that's the phone at my desk. So the dial works great, and so does the ringer. Now I did have to rewire the ringer, um, as I believe it's set up for a different kind of dialing, something like that, I don't remember. I just had to move one wire for the ringer, and that made it ring. So I guess I can make this ring. Uh, Two eight two one seven nine six. Can't dial a phone. Actually, one moment. So I adjusted the ringer volume. Now I'm not going to do this particularly long because it is two sixteen in the morning, according to the BCM. So I'll just do this quickly. And oh, I guess I can do this. It surprises me that this phone, when turned all the way down the ringer, is actually very quiet compared to the 2500. So I turned it all the way down. I don't know if that's normal for these. Probably is. But that's kind of quiet. Even at the second level. It is pretty quiet. Now it is double ringing because it's an internal call. Um, normally if, if I was getting an external call, this uh, telephone will ring but a normal long ring. I guess we can dial one more number. Let's dial the USPS. No idea if that's audible, but it went through. Now the way I have my BCM set up is it uh, out pulses with tone. Out pulses, right? It dials out uh, with DTMF tone, but my ATA, which is a Grandstream HT802, can accept uh, pulse dialing, which is pretty nice. Now 
This phone, being a bell ringer phone, does command uh, a beefy ringer current, or voltage rather. But this does play nicer with um, lower, uh, lower power ringers. So this phone is, so I have two Nortel ATA2s. And those are uh, external, standalone, and they take in 24 volts AC, I think, something like that. And they connect back to the key service unit. And those are like 85 volts for the ringer, so they ring the phones like this very well. But uh, this here is off of the internal ATAs, which it has four of. Assuming you have the key codes, which I do. But this uh, struggles to ring the 2500. Uh, well, I, wouldn't, I shouldn't say struggle. It doesn't sound amazing. It doesn't do an amazing job of it. But this phone does fares much better, which surprises me. I would have expected the newer phone to have an easier time. But it's still, I'd still rather have this on the ATA2s because they are still, I think, I think the ATA2s 85 volts RMS. And this is 65, something like that. So, you're the ringer. It sounds great. So, I suppose the last thing I can do... Oh, no, there's one thing I want to do first. Let me disconnect the red cord here. Uh, is I want to show the bottom before I open it up. I should shift this over here. Being very careful with it, of course. So this is the corrosion I was talking about, and it uh, is around all the feet. Now, I'd like to try some rubber restore on these feet. They're... They're hard. The one, the feet on my 2500, that phone's um, 11 years newer than this. So they're, they're actually, they still have some life to them, but these are cracked too. But maybe, I, these are the original feet. I don't want to replace them. But given the shape of the oxidation though, that makes me wonder, and I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I, I'm wondering if this had the older style feet originally, and this is from that, or maybe they got wet, so I don't know. It falls could talk, or in this case, telephones. But the one thing I can't talk about is this sticker. And this is another one of the reasons I did purchase this telephone. So it says, sold by Wisconsin Telephone, 101083. Now, uh, those who know is, that is less than two months before the finalization of divestiture. So, which which finalized um, January 1st, 1984. But I believe starting in 1982 or 83, one of those, time, one of those years, uh, the Bell system began allowing subscribers to outright purchase their telephones. And you can see 101083, that goes along with that being, you know, pre-divestiture too, but, uh, this phone lived its entire life. I don't know about manufacturing. I don't remember where the Bell, the Western Electric plants were. I think they were in New Jersey and that area, the Northeast, which is where I'm from actually, but I digress. But this tells me that this phone pretty much lived its entire life in Wisconsin. And when I purchased it, it also came from Wisconsin. Uh, I believe uh, Appleton? I don't remember. So, this phone <laughs> uh, didn't really move around very much. So, anyways, I am going to cut. Oh, before I do that, I wanted to come up here. Now, this is my own. I put it. I have asset tracking numbers. So I can look at my data sheet and go, oh, this is the condition, functionality, all the information about stuff. But you can see, of course, 500 CD, 10 of 67. So I'm going to cut and I'm going to have this thing open. It has been unscrewed. So I'm going to now carefully lift the cover off. So, you can see our network and the rewiring I had to do. 
uh, I believe it was moving this black wire, which uh, if memory serves, was on the yellow terminal, but I had to move it to green. I'm probably wrong, but I don't remember. So you can see our 9C dial, 425E network. I don't remember the ringer code, but it is original 1967. You can see the corrosion. It, it looks worse than it is. It's all just on the surface. I might take a crack at um, trying to fix it up myself. I don't know. I'd like to make it a little bit better because this phone is in very good condition. Now, I don't, this is not a showpiece phone. None of my phones are, I use them. So I'm not too bothered. But you can see, of course, a, a line cord, which is the green, avocado green. But you can see what I was talking about with the wires. Well, I guess really actually looking at it now, that I think about it, a lot of these are PVC coated wires, but some of these wires back here are uh, wire wrapped. Well, I, I guess this probably is the original line cord then. Well, I'm sure it is because it's color matched, but anyways. Come over here, we can see fixed set cord. And the back of the 9C dial. Now this is old enough that it has a metal gearing on the dial, which is nice, which is probably why it sounds as good as it does. It still works fine. All right, like I said, I do need to lubricate it. Uh, it's still a good preventative measure even if it doesn't necessarily need it. But it is, besides that corrosion, it is very clean in here. Uh, there's really no dust. There's nothing in there. It's very clean inside the dial. This telephone was taken care of. You can see. Is that? Oh, that's unclipped. I never noticed that. Hmm. Uh, can I do this with one hand? I might have to take the dial out. I don't want to manhandle this. You know, I guess this is a good excuse to take out the dial. But before that, let me just show a little bit more. See, 67 on the ringer. Set it back to loud because I like it on loud. I'm going to take out the dial really quick. Now that the dial is removed, you can see inside a little bit more. I haven't actually taken out the dial before. Or no, I did once. I take that back. But I know I did not remove this, but I have reattached it. And I'm glad I did because that was very uh, difficult to get on without breaking it, but I didn't break it. So, let's see. So we have a four wire, four wire dial. It's hard to say. You can see 10 of 67, 9C. And you can see it uh, is a, uh, can I do this with one hand? Yes. This is a metal geared dial, suspected for 67. I believe it was the very tail end of the 60s that they started moving to plastic gearing. I could be wrong. It's kind of difficult to do with one hand. But you can see it, it operates very smoothly. I do want to, like I said, lubricate this. But it's very, it's very, very clean. I can see down in there. Wish I could turn the flash on easily. And you can see there's a little bit of dirt around the dial. I could clean that off in just a minute, though. I might do that. Let's carefully turn around. You can see in from the top. And I will surprise how non-brittle this plastic is. I mean, it is brittle. Don't get me wrong, but just, you know, after dealing with vintage computers so much for over the years, I'm so used to plastic like this. You know, in my head, I'd just touch this and it'd explode. Given how old it is, but well, here we are. It would not be helpful to install the dial upside down. I'm gonna have to reattach this. But I suppose that's there's really not much more to that. I placed a call, called into it, showed off the 505A plug, and 
Maybe an overall demonstration. I like this phone a lot. Um, I, I, I kind of like the 2500 better, but I'm also kind of biased to that phone because I've had it for so long and it's, it's been a good phone for me. Oh, yeah, that is pretty corroded. I'll have to see. Uh, is that? No, it's not coming off down there. Okay. I, I want to try to make this look as good as I can. As yeah, as I can. Because my twenty five hundred. That phone was in okay condition when I got it. It's in some ways better now, and in some ways worse now. But that phone gets heavy daily use and has for years. This phone is a little bit more show PC, but it's certainly still not a show piece. I don't even think condition wise it is anyways, even though it is in my opinion, very nice. But I guess that is it for this video. I can't think of anything else to show. I love that sound. I love the 9C dial. But yes, <laughs> I guess I can put it back together before I completely wrap this up. So one moment. So I figured what I could do for the outro is dial the 500, or the 2500 rather. See it over here in its beautiful red. So I'll pick up the phone. the other way around. And I guess that is it for this. So, there might be more coming, there might not be, I don't know. I'd still like to make more videos, but this is it for now. So, thank you for watching. If you managed to put up with me, this long. Thank you.